see what I can do. Uh, welcome, welcome, welcome to Chillin' with Sari. Happy Friday. I'm super excited to have you guys here with me tonight. As always, it's a pleasure and definitely an honor. Um, I definitely feel like I have some sauce for you guys tonight, so make sure you have a pen and paper to take notes. Uh, if not, the call is being recorded, and I will definitely drop it in case you want to review or tap back in. But as always, we will be starting our call with a little bit of mindset tonight. And then afterwards, um, of course, we have a judge-free zone available for all of our family to be able to vent uh, or share some good vibes that has happened this past week. So let me go ahead and share my screen. And while I am doing that, family, um, I know it was mentioned that we were going to have a special guest uh, this evening to talk about mental health. However, uh, she did have a family emergency with her kiddo, so that is being postponed, not canceled, uh, but postponed. So I will definitely keep you guys um, updated on that because she still definitely wants to come and share some value with our family. So I will keep you guys posted on that. Let's go ahead and get started. Um, drop a one in the chat if you guys are able to see my screen. Perfect, perfect, perfect. And yes, I do see, I didn't see any of the comments before, but yes, we have some amazing birthdays coming up in July. So I'm definitely super excited to celebrate with you guys because I love birthdays. You guys know I love birthdays, so it's lit. Um, so family, again, welcome to Chillin' with Sari. Uh, tonight, you guys, I wanted to talk a little bit about uh, the fixed versus growth mindset with you all. Um, again, I'm always looking for different ways to share value with you guys. And um, in doing my research, you know, for our call tonight, this is something that stuck out to me and uh, something I felt would be beneficial for our family. So with that said, let's go ahead and get started. Um, Debbie Millman, she is an artist and a writer. Uh, and I found that she had actually delivered a commencement speech um, a couple of years back. And uh, I wanted to share a short excerpt actually um, that includes the quote that you see on the screen. So she says that in the grand scheme of a life, maybe, just maybe, it's not about knowing or not knowing, choosing or not choosing, but perhaps what is truly known can't be described or articulated by creativity or logic, science or art. Perhaps it could be expressed by the most authentic and meaningful combination of the two, poetry. Uh, poetry. As Robert Frost once wrote, a poem begins as a lump in the throat, a sense of wrong, a homesickness, a love sickness. It is never a thought to begin with. I recommend the following course of action for those like you who are just starting out or who, like me, may be reconfiguring midway through. Heed the words of Robert Frost, start with a big fat lump in your throat, start with a profound sense of wrong, a deep homesickness, a crazy love sickness, and run with it. If you imagine less, less will be what you undoubtedly deserve. So do what you love, family, and don't stop until you get what you love. I'm gonna say that again. Do what you love and don't stop until you get what you love. Work as hard as you can, imagine immensities. Don't compromise and don't waste time. In order to strive for a remarkable life, you have to decide that you want one. Start now, not 20 years from now, 
not 30 years from now, not two weeks from now, now, okay? So, of course, family, for some people, this is easier said than done. Why? Because some of us in one form or another have limited or still currently limit our possibilities, which isn't uncommon. I know you guys have seen these slides before. Um, I'm not here to present or do the presentation for you guys, but I want you to just truly think that, yes, we've seen these slides a million times ever since, you know, before we were presented with this skill set, and of course, during. But do we ever take the time to reflect through our journey and through our process that this might still be, you know, the way some people are feeling because we're still in the beginning, we're, we're still in the beginning stages of our journey. There are still some new traders who are working, you know, their job um, and doing this as a side hustle or again, as an additional a way to multiply our income until they're able to retire, until they're able to quit, you know? So people, people are still going through, through the process, even if, again, this is something that has been a blessing to many. So there's still people who feel like, you know, they deserve more, they could be doing more, and there's still people that aren't fully happy um, as much as they would like to be. That's just the reality of it. And that's okay. That's okay. When you see those people, when you see our family who might be experiencing that, just, I encourage you to just give them a little, a little bit of courage. Just remind them that they're on the right track because some of them might not be feeling happy or fulfilled. And of course, as you know, that can affect some things. And of course, I just wanna remind you that there is definitely another way and things definitely can be different. But I wanna just backtrack a little bit to why what I had just mentioned is a little bit easier said than done is because what begins as a reasonable, um, way of kind of protecting ourselves. It can sometimes gather momentum, exponential momentum, as far as some of the thoughts that we have, you know? And sometimes that can take us down different life paths that, you know, take us away from our, our, our dreams and our, our goals. But these common and self-imposed restrictions family you know, though they start out simple, we sometimes begin to worry that we aren't good enough, you know, that we're not smart enough or talented enough to get what it is that we want. And then we voluntarily live in this paralyzing mental framework, trapped, um, because again, it's something that we've, you know, not only created, but developed over such a long period of time. And so instead of confronting how we've contributed to that, you know, uh, this, this self-fulfilling mental state that we're in, just the possibility of failing turns into something self-fulfilling. We begin to believe that these personal restrictions are in fact fixed limitations of the world. We go on to live our lives and all the while we wonder what we can change the things that we can do different, you know? And we calculate and recalculate when we'll be ready to do the things that we really wanna do and we dream, if only, if only, someday, maybe one day. Why is that? Why is that, family? One of the most basic beliefs that we carry about ourselves a woman by the name of Carol Dwe uh, Dweck, Carol Dweck, has found in her research has to do with how we view and inhabit what we consider to be 
our personality. So of course, um, this comes into mind as far as, yes, there's different mindsets, but two of the major mindsets that a lot of people have is a fixed mindset and a growth mindset. So I wanna go through those terms with you guys so that you can fully understand what exactly that means. So with a fixed mindset, people believe that their basic qualities like their talent or their intelligence are simply fixed rate. There's nothing that they can do about it. It was something that they were born with and that's just what it is. It is what it is pretty much. Um, these people tend to spend time documenting their intelligence of talents instead of developing them. Now, keep in mind that this actually happens to be one of the more harmful, actually the most harmful, but the most harmful mindset that people have. Now, a fixed mindset, it assumes that our character, intelligence, and creative ability are pretty much static givens, which we can't change in any meaningful way. So some examples of that is, um, you know, oh, that person is, was a natural born singer. I could never sing like that person because, you know, they just have the natural ability. I, I don't have the natural ability. I sing in the shower and that's it, you know, or I'm just no good at dancing. Um, that could be the same even for what we do on a daily basis. There might be some people out there who have been introduced to the skill set and quit because they felt, oh, you know, there are people who are making lots of money and lots of success in this business. They're just natural at that. They're a natural born speaker or a uh, money maker. They just have that drive. That's, that's just not something that I was born with, you know? So everything is about the outcome. So if you happen to fail or not succeed or you're just not the best, then pretty much everything that you've done has been wasted. Everything that you've done has been wasted. All of that time, all of the money invested, et cetera, um, because that person didn't see any growth or again, even uh, because they didn't feel like they had the ability or the, the capability to be able to do that, then it is what it is. It just, it is what it is. So pretty much family, um, all costs, it, pretty much these people, they strive for success and avoid, try to avoid failure at all costs and it becomes a way of maintaining the sense of being smart or skilled. Now, the growth mindset, on the other hand, family, these people believe that their basic qualities like their talent or their intelligence can be developed through dedication and hard work. So it's pretty much the starting point. It's when you're at the very start of the race, you're getting ready, you're getting geared up, you have what you have, at the beginning, you might be lined up with people who have similar, similar abilities, but the success, it depends on time and effort. So as you continue to improve your skills, as you continue to you know, go through the personal development and take the time to learn, uh, improving the skills pretty much leads to better, greater growth. So some of the examples with that include, you know, someone who has the confidence that they're going to make it through no matter what, no matter what that looks like. And of course, it's possible to make mistakes, but it's an opportunity for you to learn. It's an opportunity for you to learn and you are in control of your ability and can learn and improve. So, of course, you know, these people who have the growth mindset, they tend to thrive a little bit more. Um, they thrive on challenges and they see failure as an evidence of 
unintelligent, but as a way to pretty much launch forward. It's kind of like a springboard for, for growth. And not only for growth, but stretching our current and existing abilities that we have. Now, out of these two mindsets, family, uh, that we manifest, it, it comes again from a very early age. Um, a lot of the things that we've developed in our mind has come from some of the different experiences that we've had as children. Some of the things that we've seen our parents experience or even some of the things that our parents and our teachers and just mentors might have been saying to us. You know, um, there's a lot of people who might have the same teacher when they're younger, but they have different experiences. Um, I know that for me, with my mom and my grandma, I tell you guys about them all the time. Um, I feel like because I had them, you know, identifying the fact that I wanted to be a singer in the entertainment field, that they encouraged me. They they continued to push me um, forward and tell me that no matter what, that they were proud of me um, because of the fact that I was trying. And again, they pushed me, they, they challenged me to continue to grow, to take opera classes and go to art schools and, and figure out different ways to grow, to improve my skills. Now, has everybody had that same experience or, or uh, that particular encouragement? No, but that doesn't mean that it's too late for you to shift your mindset and continue to grow from where you are right now. I know family that you guys have at least heard the name Bob Proctor. If you guys haven't heard of, you know, any of his seminars or been on any of his calls, but it really is about the paradigm shift and taking the time to unlearn a lot of a lot of toxic traits, a lot of toxic habits, so that way you can grow. And once you get into that shift, of course, the growth will be even more exponential because now you don't have uh, negative traits or negative things, negative energy even, that is trying to hold you back. Um, now, with what you guys see on the screen, um, I don't know if it's too clear. If not, I can definitely drop this in the chat for you guys to be able to uh, reference back to this. But it is a way for you guys to pretty much see uh, the two different mindsets. going to try and zoom in for you guys, but that's okay. So again, we do have our, on the left-hand side, we have our fixed mindset. Um, and then on the right-hand side, we have our growth mi mindset. So we always want to be on the right-hand side, family, whether that's with money, with the mindset, we just want to get on the right side. Okay. Now, on the left-hand side, when it comes to challenges, uh, with that fixed mindset, those people tend to avoid challenges, whereas people with a growth mindset will embrace them. When it comes to obstacles, people with a fixed mindset will give up pretty easily, whereas people with a growth mindset, um, they will literally stand in the face of an obstacle. They're like, bring it on. You know, they're open to the challenge because again it's an opportunity for you to be able to grow when it comes to effort people with the fixed mindset don't really give a lot of effort they don't really invest um, a lot of energy into what it is that they're doing if they already feel 
that they don't have what it takes to be successful from the get-go. Um, so again, uh, it's having that poor mindset. Um, we talk about how poor is pretty much passing opportunities, passing over opportunities repeatedly. So these are those types of people. And of course, when it comes to our growth mindset people, um, they take the time to give extra effort. They go above and beyond because again, they're serious about their growth. They want to propel forward so that way they can go ahead and be successful. When it comes to criticism, our fixed mindset people tend to ignore negative feedback. Um, they kind of take it as an attack. Whereas our growth mindset people will take the feedback um, and figure out ways how they can go ahead and adjust so that they can fix it for next time. And that way they can continue to grow. Um, they do their best to uh, not necessarily avoid mistakes, but do their best to avoid repeating those mistakes. Um, I don't know if you guys were, uh, most of the family was on my call last week when I was talking about how, uh, what was the quote that I mentioned? about how insanity, of course, is repeating the same thing over and over again, expecting a different result, whereas success is repeating the same thing over and over again with adjustments, so that way there's growth, so that way you can find the best result out of everything that you've experienced. Now, when it comes to the success of others, um, a person with a fixed mindset, you know, they, they kind of feel a little defeated because they weren't the, the top person or they, they weren't the person who won. Um, and they feel that because someone else was successful that they, they, they lack, um, that they lack the ability to be successful as well. Whereas we know that, you know, with that growth mindset, when you celebrate others, it accelerates, it accelerates your success. So of course, family, I know for some of you guys, this might be information that you've heard before, but there's nothing wrong with hearing it again until it becomes a habit, until it becomes something that really is part of our spiritual DNA, if you will. Um, Cause of course we want to improve. Now, I did find um, in doing my research a couple of really good discussion questions when it came to developing that growth mindset. And you don't necessarily have to, you know, come on the line and share what it is that it, any of your responses. But I truly do want you to take the time as I'm going through these questions to reflect on, you know, if it is an experience that you may have had yourself and how we can continue to grow from this point because family, we want to continue to grow. We don't want to be stagnant because when you're stagnant, when you're not growing, you're dying. And we ain't got time for that. So let's go so with uh some of these self-reflection questions um the first one is when do you feel smart now i know that might sound like a silly question but again all of it incorporates back into how we view ourselves and our personality for some people for example i'll use myself as an example um, when I was working at my call center, people would tend to hear a difference from when I would talk with my coworkers versus when I would actually be on the phone with my customers. They would say, oh, you sound smart because now you're using big words and your tone is kind of a little bit 
you know, a little bit brighter and your, your pitch is a little bit higher, you know? So what is that, that posture that you're giving yourself? You know, when do you, when do you feel smart? When you're doing something flawlessly or when you're learning something new? So how can you make thriving, stretching, and struggling into something that makes you feel smart. We wanna be able to approach it from different ways, family, because again, when, when we create that foundation for when we feel smart all the time, no matter what it is that we're going through, then of course, when you have things that are being thrown at you, it's just gonna fall right off. Why? Because you've developed that for yourself. You're growing your mindset to where pretty much you're repelling that that negative energy that that comes at you, you know? Now, two, can you think of a time you faced an important opportunity or challenge with a fixed mindset? Now, as as we're going through the self-reflection family. I want you to approach it without any judgment for yourself. Because when you're approaching it with judgment, again, that's that fixed mindset way of doing it. Now, of course, for some people, it might be a habit that has been developed, but let's, let's start now, not 20 years from now, not 30 years from now, right now, to unravel that and, and create a better habit to, of course, think of ourselves in a, in, a, in a better way, in a stronger way. How are you talking to yourself? Let's talk positively, right? So as you're reflecting on things that we can improve on, try to do so without judgment, okay? Um, so again, can you think of a time you faced an important opportunity or challenge with a fixed mindset. Family, I cannot tell you how many times when I was younger, even, let's be honest, even recently, where I've gone to an audition and I've heard like, you guys, I have some amazing friends that can sing their butts off, okay? I love them to death and I know what their talent and their capabilities are just from being around them however old me okay keyword old me <laughs> used to be like oh well i'm not gonna go audition for american idol if my homegirl is going because of course she would get it before i i would she definitely has way more talent than i do like i know she would kill it now even though i'm complimenting her I'm putting myself down because I feel that because she's going out for an opportunity that I'm not capable of doing so too. Um, that my level of success or ability wouldn't be able to match hers. Now, had I gone to the audition, who's to say that they weren't looking for a particular personality or whatever? You know, we're all unique. We're all unique. And that's something that we have to remember is that I have something that you don't have and you have something that I don't have. And that makes us special. And that's okay. Let's embrace that. Let's embrace that. So B Pain just hopped in the chat and said that uh, I can't be doing that. Major facts. I'm working on it. I'm learning. I'm growing. And I'm inviting you guys to learn and grow with me as well. So um, continuing with that, what were your thoughts and worries about your abilities, about other people's judgments, about the possibility of failure? Now describe them vividly. And you want to do that because when you put it out on paper, you can take that same opportunity and that challenge and you're able to recreate it in a positive manner. You, again, have the control to be able to do that. So 
you want to be able to switch into that growth mindset and think of it as a chance to learn new things. What are the plans and strategies that you're thinking about now so that way you can be better when you go to attack it next time? Whether that's for that audition or even with trading or whether you're going out to speak publicly. Family, I don't know how many times I thought to myself before, again, old me, that I wouldn't be confident talking to a lot of people. And now, because I've embraced the challenge, because I've transitioned into a growth mindset, I'm able to attack it even better than before. Now, do I make mistakes sometimes? Yes, that's okay. I continue to learn from those mistakes and I can honestly say that even from the first time I'd done a chillin' with Sari mindset call that I've made a lot of adjustments and I've created strategies to be able to come at it in a better way. So again, just take the time to identify how you were feeling before, some of the mistakes that you might have made and learn and grow from them. Moving forward, think of times that other people outdid you and you just assumed that they were smarter or more talented. Same example that I mentioned before with my friend and I with our audition. Now, with the growth mindset, you want to consider the idea that they just used better strategies taught themselves more, practiced harder, and worked their way through obstacles. And you can do that too, if you want to. But family, you have to make the decision to do that. There's been countless times that Riyadh, that David E. Monitier, that Brittany Burrell, that a lot of our mentors and all of these motivational speakers that we've listened to, again, say, don't compare yourself. Even Tez mentioned on one of his mindset calls the other day, of course, that comparison is the thief of joy. You can't compare your chapter three to somebody's chapter 12. And nobody should compare their chapter, whatever they're on, to where you're currently at either, because everybody's journey is different. Everybody has different elements, different environments that affects their journey. Different from everybody else. Like, I want you guys to really think about that. Uh, even if you had a twin, okay, and you guys were born at the exact same time, even though they might have, or you guys might have the same DNA, pretty much the same look, everything, you guys will still have different experiences no matter what no matter what no matter what don't try not to compare um and again just keep in mind that you again have the control you have the ability to make the decision to grow but you have to be committed to that and you have to make the decision you have to start by making the decision to do so Four, even though it says a second three, it's four. <laughs> Are there situations where you get stupid? Now, where you, in, where you disengage your intelligence? Now, again, that might seem like a silly question, but I really want you guys to think about that. Have there been any times where you've suppressed your intelligence, you've suppressed your talent or your ability just so that you can accommodate other people. Why? Why do we do that? Is it so that we don't outshine others or so that we can fit in? I can't tell you guys, you know, that I haven't been there because I have. I have. But the next time that you're in one of those situations, get yourself into a growth mindset and think about learning and improvement, not judgment, and hook it back up. When you find yourself getting ready to go into that mode of, of suppressing yourself, 
stay pause, self. We're not gonna do that this time. You're gonna say self, I'm happy with me and who I am. And if nobody else wants to accept that, then that's on them. That's their problem, not mine. Okay. Now, is there something in your past that you think measured you? A test score, a dishonest or callous action, being fired from a job, being rejected? Focus on that. Focus on that because that gives you an opportunity to pinpoint where you started to experience that. Because from that, that little point, that's when those thoughts of self-doubt, of low self-esteem, those thoughts of lack started to sprout. So we wanna chop that out of our brain garden. We wanna chop that out so that way we can continue to feed our mind, continue to feed our garden so that it can grow. We wanna get rid of all of those weeds that are in their family. So you wanna put it into a growth mindset perspective. Look honestly at your role in it. So that way you're taking responsibility for, for your actions, but understand that it doesn't define you. It doesn't define your intelligence or your personality or anything else about you because why? We grow. I don't know how many times I've said on past calls or with in the chat or just in general with, with conversations that I know for myself, I'm not the same person that I was 10 years ago, five years ago, a couple of weeks ago we grow. So instead, look at it as what did I or can I learn from that experience and how can I use it as a basis for growth and carry that with you, keep that with you. That's like your, your point where what's it called? Sorry, I'm gonna ask a quick question. It, What's it called in the video games where it, where you respawn? Okay, I figured it out. <laughs> Let that be your respawn point, okay? So if at any moment where you're feeling doubt or anything, go back and approach it in a way to of, of how can I how can I grow from this? And do it again without judgment as much as possible, okay? How do you respond to constructive criticism? I know for me, family, I tend to be one of my uh, worst self-critics. <laughs> I try to strive per, for perfection and I'm learning more and more every day that it's better to strive for progress instead of perfection. Um, I feel like I've gotten better with receiving feedback and trying to look at things from a different perspective um, because sometimes people might see other things that I might not see. When you're, when you're zoomed in so close on something, there might be people who have you know, stepped a, a little bit further back from where you might be standing that can see the bigger picture. Now, do you have to take everything that somebody says and run with it and just say, okay, this is my life now? No, but be open-minded to critiques and feedback. So that way, again, you can grow. And if you find that after a couple of times of trying out that it, it doesn't work for you, then find a different way. Find a different way to grow. Remember that constructive criticism is feedback that helps you and others understand how to fix something. It's not feedback that labels something um, indeficient. So us in the constructive feedback, I'm sorry, use the constructive feedback to improve even if you believe that you've already done your best work. Now, 
Are you a person who tends to avoid responsibility for your problems or failures by making excuses or blaming others? I've been there before and that's okay. Again, I, I'm identifying ways to improve that. So we want to, in order for us to grow, the big thing is that we have to take responsibility for how we've contributed to those negative habits or those negative actions. Because at the end of the day, it's you who is with you. When you wake up, when you go to sleep, even if you have somebody laying in the bed right next to you, it is you who is with you all the time. All the time. So take responsibility um, for, for those things. And if, again, try to think of um, specific examples and discuss how you could use a growth mindset to take responsibility and start to correct the problems that you face. Okay. And finally, do we use feeling, do we use feeling bad as a reason for doing nothing? When you feel disappointed, thwarted, cheated, or depressed, do you use this as a reason to stop trying? Guilty. I've been there. So shifting family, shifting into that growth mindset, what steps could you take to help growth mindset thinking overcome your fixed mindset? Make a plan and stick with it. Now, if some of you guys have been on uh, any of Nino's calls, he mentioned, and it's something that will stick with me forever, that all excuses are, it's just an excuse. It's an excuse no matter what. Big or small, an excuse is an excuse. It's an excuse. If it is something that you truly want, if there's something that you truly want to learn, if there's somebody that you really want to spend time with, whether a mentor, a loved one, a friend, family member, if there's something that you truly desire, if there's a goal that you really want to accomplish, you will figure out a way to make it happen. Point blank, period. Don't let anything stop you from getting there. Don't let anything stop you from getting there. I'm gonna sit through these because I know that you guys have been seeing like a bunch of words on your screen. Um, but I did just want to briefly discuss a couple of growth mindset practices that maybe you guys can incorporate in your daily, weekly, monthly life routine, okay? So you want to think about a time during the past week, so we're going to bring it current family, when you were faced with an academic or social or personal challenge. We can in Include that, you know, again, with personal things, whether in the trading world, with our business world, whatever. Think about a time, again, that you were faced with a challenge and determine if you face that challenge with a growth mindset or a fixed mindset. How do you know? If you face the challenge with a fixed mindset, how might you have approached it differently? Okay. Write it down, because if you did approach it with a fixed mindset, this is an opportunity, because in every challenge, every challenge, there's an opportunity for you to grow. So let's, right now, take a moment to fix it, okay? Reflect on real life examples of the use of a growth mindset by you or someone you know, 
and do some journaling or free writing about this example. Try to explain how the growth mindset helped you or someone you know to solve a problem or to achieve a goal. This way it gives you a reference point, families. This is kind of like that blueprint for you to be able to start to create that habit of creating your, your growth mindset. So of course you wanna be uh, specific. What did you think and or do that allowed you to push through the challenge and save your writing? Okay, now after engaging in the last step multiple times, read through your free writing. Now, are there similarities in what you did each time, what you thought each time? And is there a pattern that you can identify? Okay, again, be specific, this is key. Try to identify specific thinking patterns and behavioral patterns that exemplify the growth mindset because of course that's what we want to focus on and remember these when you face a new challenge because when you create that foundation you have something to pull from you have you're able to ground yourself okay now think of something about yourself you've been wanting to change me I know that I have a lot of things that I wanna change, so I'm sure family, we all have things that we want to improve on, right? What is it and has a fixed mindset prevented you from doing this? Think about it from a growth mindset now and spell out a concrete plan for you to be able to change. And when you're feeling stuck, remember the power of yet. So just because it hasn't been done, right now doesn't mean that it's not yet possible okay so if you say you know i haven't stuck to my trading plan or i had a goal to reach you know a thousand pips a week if you haven't done it yet remember it's yet it doesn't mean that it's not possible for you to still do so remember to focus on effort, struggle, and persistence despite setbacks. I'm gonna say that one more time. Focus on effort, struggle, and persistence despite setbacks. Because a setback prepares you for a comeback, okay? Choose difficult tasks, focus on strategies, reflect on different strategies that work and don't work, Focus on learning and improving, seek challenges, and work hard, okay? Finally, I have just a couple of suggestions for ways to develop a growth mindset. Now, there's pretty sure plenty out there in the world, but these are a couple that stuck out for me. You wanna acknowledge and embrace perfection, family, because hiding from your weaknesses means that you're never going to overcome them. I know for me that I have things that, again, I want to improve on. Um, and I know for sure, for sure, that I'm not perfect. <laughs> but that doesn't stop me from striving to be better. Now, of course, if you hide from your weaknesses, then of course, you'll never overcome them, but you'll never know what you're truly capable of. Don't you want to know what you're capable of? Because you truly are capable of anything that you set your mind to. Because of course, if you can hold it in your mind, family, you can hold it in your hand. But you won't know if you don't try. You want to view challenges as opportunities, like I just said in that last slide. In every challenge, there is room for opportunity. There's opportunity for you to be able to grow. You want to try different learning tactics because there isn't just one specific way to learn something. Um, I think one example that I've given is that just because one plus eight equals nine 
it doesn't mean that there aren't other ways to get to nine. There's two plus seven, three plus six, four plus five, and so on. So if you find that there's a, a strategy that you're using that may not be giving you uh, the amount of growth that you're truly seeking, don't be afraid to step out and explore. Try something new, try a different learning strategy and see if it works for you. Now, you wanna replace the word failing with learning because again, how do we speak to ourselves? We want to create, um, we want to create an environment for our mind to where anything that flows out of it is like an angel coming out of heaven. We want to create that paradise kind of environment for our mind so that way we can we can grow. And if we're telling ourselves, oh, I'm failing, then of course that's gonna manifest out into our reality. So replace the word failing with learning because again, anything that you experience is just contributing to your journey. It's contributing to your growth. And family, you want to stop seeking approval from other people. I know that I did a call on this a couple of weeks ago that you don't need anybody else's permission to be great, okay? Because you're great. You're amazing. Embrace that. You don't need anybody else to tell you that. You don't need anybody else to tell you what you're capable of. Create that for yourself. You're a creator in all aspects, okay? Tell you the process over the end result. Of course, family, um, I've mentioned a couple of different times that success is not the destination, but instead the journey of getting there. It is the process that is making you stronger, making you more wiser and it's the process that is truly molding you into the person that you're destined to be. So appreciate that, value that, value that. Cultivate a sense of purpose. You wanna celebrate growth with others, which a lot of us tend to do anyways, but there's nothing wrong with doing it more because why not, right? When you celebrate, you accelerate. You want to emphasize growth over speed. And finally, you want to reward actions, not traits. Meaning you don't want to, for example, you wouldn't want to praise Riyadh or B. Burrell because they have the titles of being a mentor you want to reward them or appreciate them or acknowledge them because of the value that they are actually sharing with us. Let the actions show the results, not the words. So do that for yourself as well. Do that for the people in your circle because environment is key for that growth mindset. Not only the environment that is out here in your reality with the people that you surround yourself with, but also the environment that you create for yourself. Now, of course, family, we meet these people sometimes who are more courageous than we are, person who didn't determine what was impossible before it was possible. And a lot of times when we've had those moments of being stagnant um, or had self-doubt, when we see these people such as the Riyads, the David E. Monitiers, the Chad Thompsons, Brittany Burrells, something in us is reawakened. Embrace that. Embrace that. Embrace that. 
And like I said earlier, don't compromise and don't waste time in order to strive for a remarkable life. You, you have to decide that you want one. So start now, not 20 years from now, not 30 years from now, not two weeks from now, but now. That is it for our mindset call tonight, family. So uh, I am going to stop sharing my screen. And uh, we are going to open up the line for our family. Um, as always, I hope you guys were able to find some value with what I shared tonight. And um, yeah, just know that I love you. And again, that um, let's. Let's get to that growth mindset, all right? <laughs> I'm gonna stop recording um, in case uh, anybody wants to share anything that's personal. Uh,